Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to look at conditional probability and our multiplication law. We're going to use as an, uh, in our example uh, this game of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, we've talked about rock, paper, scissors before uh, in another example. I think it was uh, exercise 4-1-B uh, in this series of videos. Um, simple game, uh, you choose a rock, rock, paper, or scissors, and depending on what your opponent chooses, you uh, win, lose, or tie uh, this game. If you want to refresh around the game, a quick search online will um, will certainly give you the basics. So, uh, we'll just get started on the problem. So two, two player game. Uh, first thing, what is the probability that player one will win this game? So let's look at the possible outcomes. Uh, of this game. So here let's define some events. So event A, this will be player 1 wins. Event B, let's say this is player 1 loses. So the implication of player 1 loses, player 2 wins, but let's just keep it uh, in terms of player 1 just for simplicity. And event T, this will be a tie. So what possible outcomes in the game can lead to event A occurring, event B occurring, or event T, a tie. So let's say if, um, what are the ways that player one can win? Well, player one can win if she chooses a rock and player two chooses scissors. Uh, rock breaks scissors, player one wins. Uh, if she chooses scissors and player two chooses paper, scissors cut paper, player one wins. And finally, if you choose paper, and player two chooses a rock, paper covers rock, and so player one wins. Now, the reverse of all of these would result in first player two winning or player one uh, losing. So scissors broken by rock, paper cut by scissors, and rock covered by paper. So these are the possible outcomes that would lead to player one losing. Uh, what would lead to a tie? Both picking scissors, both picking paper or both picking rock would lead to a tie in this game. So we have a total of three, three, and three. So we have a total of nine possible outcomes uh, in this game. So if we look at this in terms of our outcome space, so let's say the area of this rectangle uh, is equal to nine, if we kind of split up these different possible outcomes that we've defined here into this outcome space, I would have here's three possible outcomes that would lead to event A. Let's oops, let me just fix my notation. So here's event A. There's three of those nine outcomes lead to event A. Three of these outcomes lead to event B. And the area around those those circles, but inside the rectangle, uh, that would refer to event T, or in this case, a tie. So three plus three plus three, that's nine possible outcomes um, uh, of, of this game. Now, if we move this into our probability space, so now instead of this having an area of nine possible outcomes, this is an area of one. Uh, now we can calculate the probabilities associated with each of these. So this is probability event A. This is three out of a total of nine possibilities. So 0 0.33. Probability event B, uh, same calculation, three over nine, 0 0.33. And finally, probability of event T, three over nine, and same 3.33. So there's some rounding error there, but they would add up to roughly one. So. There we have our, our probability space, our Venn diagram. Uh, and now we can actually answer part A. What is the probability that player one will win this game? Player one I've defined as event A. And so we can look at our Venn diagram and I can see, well, the probability associated with event A is 0 0.33. So let's say a 33% chance that player one will win this game. Okay, moving on then. Part B, what is the probability either player one or player two will win this game? So looking at the Venn diagram, it's probably relatively straightforward, but let's go through the, the mechanics of it. We'll clear up some space here. 
just so we can look at this calculation. This is an example of uh, the union of two events. So either this happens or this happens. So what we're calculating is the probability of the union of event A and B. So our formula from the addition law, our formula here would be the probability of event A plus the probability of event B minus the intersection because we don't want to double count that. So we would need to double, uh, we would need to subtract the intersection out. Now, as you can see in the Venn diagram, I've drawn it intentionally. There's a space in here, right? There's, there's no uh, intersection uh, of these two events. It's impossible if player one wins, it's impossible for player two to also win. So it's impossible for these two events to both occur. These two events are mutually exclusive. If one event occurs, it's impossible for the other event to occur. So this intersection is equal to zero. There is no intersection between these two events. So the union is then just the summation of the probabilities of each of the two events occurring. So this will be 0.33 plus 0.33. And so our answer here is 0.66, roughly. There's rounding error, of course. Of course, Roughly a 66% chance that at least one of these players is going to win the game. 33% um, chance of a tie, or that nobody wins. Okay, moving on, part C. If player one wins the first game, what is the probability that she will win the second game? Okay, so how can we go about calculating, calculating this? So here we're looking at the probability that if, so let me just use subscripts. If I win the first game, so given, let me fix my notation, sorry. It's conditional probability, right? So given that I win the first game, what's the probability that I win the second game? So we would read this, what's the probability of winning the second game given that I've won the first game? Now, what could this possibly be? Well, these two events are completely independent. Having won the first game has a no bearing whatsoever on the second game. The second game starting from scratch has nothing to do with what happened in the first game. So these two games are completely independent. These are independent events. So the conditional probability of winning the second game, conditional on having won the first, is going to be exactly equal to just the probability of winning the second game. Which, given that all of the possible outcomes are the same for the second game as they would be for the first game, this Venn diagram is still entirely accurate uh, as a depiction of the first game, the second game, the third game, whatever. It doesn't make a difference. So, it's in, they're two independent events, these two separate games. So if I won the first game, doesn't matter, has no impact on the second game. So the probability is going to be exactly the same uh, as the probability of winning the first game. So this is still going to be 0.33. Now the next one, what is the probability that player one will win two games in a row? So here we haven't started, we haven't done anything. Even if we had, it actually wouldn't make a difference. What's the probability of winning two games? So we're looking at the intersection of winning game one, the intersection of winning with game two. So the formula that, that you might have in your textbook or on a cheat sheet for an exam or something like this would be something like, um, well, what's the probability of winning the second game, given that I've won the first, times the probability of winning the first game. Right? This was that multiplication law for calculating the intersection uh, of two events. The conditional probability, if I win, if I win the first game, what's the probability of winning the second times the probability of winning that first? Now, as we've just discovered in this first exercise here, these two events are completely independent. So this conditional probability, let me get a new ink, 
this conditional probability here, well, it's just equal to that probability of winning the second game. So these are independent events. So the intersection of these two events occurring, oh, I just noticed a typo. I don't know why I put a B there. So the intersection of these two events, it's simply the product of the two probabilities, which in this case would be 0.33 times 0 0.33. And this is roughly 0 0.11. So there is a probability of 0.11 of winning two games uh, in a row. Okay, so I hope that that uh, makes a little bit of sense and helps, um, helps understand these types of problems using conditional probability uh, and the multiplication law. In this case, we looked at events that are mutually exclusive uh, and events that are independent. Okay, good. Thanks for watching.